Hi there, I'm Dr. Rich Simmons, and we're going to provide you a southeastern perspective on some of the major trends and distinctive aspects of energy in the region. Now, this will include a review of the sources from which we get our electricity, as well as some of the other implications around costs and so forth. Let's dive down into some of the distinctive aspects of electricity in our region. Again, we mentioned nuclear is an important part of this. Nuclear currently accounts for about 25% of the Southeast electricity, compared to about 20% nationally. Another big story is natural gas. In the Southeast, we do not have large amounts of geological reserve of natural gas, but we are quite able of taking unconventional gas through pipelines from other parts of the country, notably Texas and Pennsylvania and the Ohio Valley. Being able to put this natural gas online has been an important differentiator for the Southeast because it has provided low cost, comparatively low carbon, baseload electricity in a very reliable sense. So it meets some of these goals that we look for in our electricity supply, which are affordability, environmental stewardship, and reliability. We mentioned the important role that renewables are playing, and photovoltaics are probably the predominant one in the region. We see here among these solar panels, one could call these a module, and here we are in a learning module. So we think that that is an important asset to be leveraged for the region. In fact, there are a lot going on at the state government level to facilitate the intelligent adoption of solar, whether that be on the rooftop of a building or in a farm or in some other area where we could make use of all of this wonderful solar power. Each state has its own potential resources and advantages. It turns out that North Carolina is currently second in the nation in installed capacity for, new, for solar. And actually, Georgia has entered the top 10. So the, there are several states in the region that are growing tremendously. This is both, again, at the utility scale and at the distributed scale or rooftop. In addition to photovoltaics, bioenergy are an important part of the matrix in the southeast, accounting for more than 3%, for example, in Georgia. And it's a similar situation in some of our neighboring states. A large part of that comes from timber and agricultural waste streams that can be converted into cellulosic ethanols um, and also into, directly into combustion. CCS, or carbon capture and sequestration, is another feature for which the Southeast has taken some important steps forward. We have a couple of demonstration sites, both from Department of Energy labs and utilities in the region, where we are trying to demonstrate the ability to extract carbon from fossil fuel generating resources, either before or after they're burned. This is an important complement to renewables because we know that the ability to integrate renewables to the grid is a little more complicated than the fossil fuels. Part of the reason for that is that the sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow. So we're out here in the middle of the day in Atlanta, but obviously we can only capture that sunlight when it's available. It is hot out here, by the way. <laughs> if you were standing out here, you would get a feel for how much power the sun has. Big data is obviously a huge opportunity for the global market as well. And we're not talking about big data for personal cell use, but rather data as it might be leveraged to help make our electricity supply more efficient. And that is to help plants run more efficiently when they're operating, but also control their downtime and maintenance schedule so that we can make sure that the maximum return is realized on these expensive assets. Whether or not you live in one of the southeast states, you may be interested in more granular detail on the electricity matrix in these states. If so, we would encourage you to visit our resources page on the website or look up one of the references that we referred to in these slides. You may be interested in knowing for your particular state what share of your electricity is coming from solar or what share is currently coming from coal. The integration of energy solutions is going to require multiple fronts. And that means good technologies like solar and wind. That also means low cost alternatives to the prevailing fossil fuels, which have been fairly affordable. But it also means more environmentally friendly solutions that will involve the contributions of public stakeholders and voters to express their opinions and hopes for the future, which we all know and hope will be very bright.